Hello, uh, my name is Brett Palmer and I'm a local sexual health uh, doctor uh, working in southern England uh, in the United Kingdom and today we're going to be talking about uh, herpes and uh, the herpes simplex uh, virus. That's the virus that causes herp uh, herpes. And so if you're watching this video, chances are you've got some lumps and bumps uh, around your genitals um, or in your groin and you're thinking, mm, could it be herpes, what do I do? Uh, or you've just been diagnosed uh, with herpes and and uh, you think uh, the world is uh, crashing to an end and you're not sure exactly what to do. Well, hopefully this short video will allay some of your fears and uh, hopefully inform you a little bit more as to what herpes actually is. So herpes, uh, what is it? Well, it's caused by a virus called the uh, herpes simplex virus. There are two types of herpes, herpes type one and herpes type two. You usually find herpes type one around the mouth and they're sometimes called cold sores. So if you've had cold sores and you know anyone who's got cold sores, then they've got all herpes. It's as simple as that. And around the groin uh, is uh, 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 genital herpes, and that is usually caused by herpes type 2. But obviously with uh, oral sex becoming very, very popular, herpes type 1 and herpes type 2 have been muddled up quite a bit. So who's got herpes? Well, uh, herpes is uh, very, very common. So in the over 50s, 90% uh, of human beings aged over 50 ha uh, worldwide have herpes. Uh, so everyone is eventually going to get herpes or will encounter herpes if they haven't done so already. And 80% of them don't even know they've got it. This is because the immune system in the vast majority of occasions actually uh, uh, is strong enough to hold down uh, herpes and so they never get uh, the painful blisters that turn into ulcers. Um, so what actually happens? What is the first signs of herpes? Uh, well, you probably won't know when you've actually got herpes. Uh, you can uh, catch herpes and it can lay dormant for a very long time, uh, many months, even years. On the rare occasions that some people do get uh, contract herpes, they may come down with a fluey cold and then come out with um, a, a small case of blisters in the affected area and then they break down into little ulcers which are very, very painful to touch. They can be so painful that they can uh, make uh, peeing difficult and thicker. In, in fact, you can actually stop peeing completely and even walking along can be very, very painful. Hopefully, if you have been diagnosed with herpes, your herpes isn't uh, that bad. It's transmitted by skin-to-skin -skin contact, uh, which usually means uh, sexual contact. However, children do have uh, cold sores, and that's usually passed on by uh, uh, kissing grandma or uh, aunt Flo or um, uh, your mum and dad, and they just pass in on cold sores, which is all herpes. And so all herpes is far, far more common uh, then, uh, and that's herpes type 1, uh, then uh, herpes, gentle herpes, herpes type 2. But as I said, even though it's called herpes type 1 and herpes type 2, they, you can find them um, in either the mouth or around the oral area of the mouth or the genitals. So what are the tests? Well, if over the last few days you've noticed some painful uh, lumps and bumps that have broken down into blisters that are very, very painful to touch, get yourself uh, to see a local doctor or nurse at the local uh, sexual health clinic uh, because uh, someone with a professional eye can have a look and they'll be able to tell you straight away whether they think it's herpes or not and can give you treatment, which is usually a course of tablets for five or 10 days. And this will stop the virus from replicating uh, and hopefully uh, uh, it will shorten the course uh, of the illness. They can also give you some topical anaesthetic, that's basically cream. Uh, you put on uh, the affected area, uh, which will hopefully help numb the pain. Uh, and they can also uh, test it, which is usually a little swab, and they scrape the area, which is a little bit painful, and then they can send that to the lab, and then they'll be able to find out whether it's type 1 or type 2. Type 1 is usually not as bad uh, as type 2, and type 2 herpes tends to, uh, oh sorry, is, has a greater chance of reoccurring. Um, herpes, unfortunately, once you've got it, you've got it for life. And uh, that is why 90% uh, of everyone over 50 has encountered herpes. Um, but over time, your immune system does learn to recognize the virus uh, if it hasn't done so already and is able to put a, a cap on it. Uh, 
Herpes is no different from any other sexual uh, transmitted infection in that the way it's spread is that people who don't think they've got the virus um, uh, actually spread it because they don't suffer from any symptoms. Remember, 80% of individuals who have herpes don't show any symptoms at all. It doesn't mean they don't have herpes, it just means they don't have symptoms. So they're still spreading the virus. And that, unfortunately, is how it's passed on. And if people have never encountered the virus before, that is when they get symptoms. And so what are the long term uh, problems? Well, the long term problems is recurrent herpes. So only a small percentage of people get recurrent herpes and uh, every uh, few months they may get an outbreak. But hopefully the second outbreak won't be as bad as the first and the third outbreak won't be as bad as the second and it will gradually peter out and what will happen is you will become, uh, you won't have any symptoms, you will become as it were asymptomatic, uh, but what will, will happen is you'll still have the ability to spread the virus. Um, however, there's a small uh, percentage of people where the first outbreak is as bad as the first and the third outbreak is as bad as the first and they keep on getting outbreaks. For these individuals, they do need to go on uh, to suppression therapy uh, to help uh, control and stop uh, the outbreaks. Suppression therapy is uh, the same treatment as uh, you'll be given at your first uh, visit to a sexual health centre and that's just a course of tablets called acyclovir. They're very, very safe, safe tablets and you can take them even if you're pregnant. So if you have been diagnosed with herpes and you're pregnant, don't worry about it. If the doctor has prescribed you a cyclovir in the last trimester of pregnancy, you can, uh, you can take the medication. It's nice and safe and it won't affect your baby. Um, are there any dangers of having uh, herpes while you're in pregnancy? Well, if you've had herpes before you was pregnant, there's uh, really no danger uh, to the child, but the doctor will, may ask you to take his uh, medication at the end uh, of pregnancy. If, however, it's your first time you've had uh, uh, herpes, um, and it's your uh, third trimester, uh, then you do need to uh, take the medication in order to lower the chances of your baby uh, from getting uh, herpes, which can be unfortunately uh, quite an unpleasant illness uh, for the newborn. And this is one of the rare occasions where blood tests are actually useful. Um, so if you're watching this out of interest thinking, well, do I need a blood test to find out if it's uh, herpes, if I've got herpes or not, even though if I've got no symptoms, don't waste your money. Save your money, you don't need to test. Uh, the vast majority of people uh, may, that encounter herpes are able to control it and there's no point hunting for something when you don't show any particular signs or symptoms. The only time you should have a blood test is if you have a partner, they have genital herpes and you want to find out whether you've got it or not. That's a sensible time when you should have a blood test and because if you don't have it, your partner can then have uh, a therapy or suppression therapy so they don't pass it on to you. Um, so who should you tell? So if you've got herpes, should you tell your uh, new partner? Well, to be honest with you, <clears throat> If you didn't have a disease but your partner did and they knew about it, I think it's only fair uh, to tell that person and to treat that person as you would like to be treated. Uh, so you probably should tell uh, your future partners that you have got herpes and probably tell them before you have sex with them. Um, it's, there's, there's no way of uh, breaking up a relationship and pissing off your partner uh, by saying after sex, oh by the way hun, I've got herpes. Um, so tell your partner before you have sex and chances are they'll be very uh, open-minded and watch this video together and learn about it, uh, which is uh, probably the best way forward. So uh, that's the main things about herpes. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to send me a message to YouTube. And if you like this uh, video, um, please uh, like and share and uh, subscribe and uh, any updates will automatically come to you and uh, there will be more videos coming. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Take care and have a good, uh, happy sexual health. Thank you.